got myself some wisdom from a leather bag book got myself a savior when i took a second Opened up the pages And what did I find? A black and white portrait of a king Who's a friend of mine Funny how when you think you're right Everybody else must be wrong Till someone with fool's wisdom Somehow comes along His voice was strange and the words he said I didn't quite understand Yet I knew that he was speaking right By the leatherback book in his hand in Jesus, dear friends. My name is James Jacob Prash from Morial Ministries. Coming to you here from New York City today on RTN Christian TV and Radio. RTN is a platform that has multiple features and multiple formats. We have Christian Radio, obviously, Christian Internet TV. We have a podcast, we have social media, and we have a wide variety of of speakers, Christian authors, evangelists, Bible expositors, and we certainly have some very edifying and Christ-glorifying Christian music. RTN exists for three purposes. One is for the Lord. Two is to reach the unsaved with the gospel. And three, we are here for you. Please tell your friends about our RTN. Avail yourself of our resources. Thank you so much. My name again is James Jacob Prash, and I uh, am in New York at the moment. I'll be speaking here in New York City on a Saturday, this Saturday, at 7 p.m. at the Church of the Open Door on 7th Street, East 7th Street, and 3rd Avenue in Manhattan at the Church of the Open Door right on the corner, East 7th Street um, and 3rd Avenue in Manhattan, opposite the Cooper Union. Sunday afternoon at 3.30, I'll be in Baltimore, Maryland. For those in the Baltimore, Washington area, we'll be in Baltimore, Maryland at the Church of the Open Door. The details of this and the venue address are available on the Moriel website, moriel.org, or just Google Moriel itinerary. Next week, I shall be in the Los Angeles area with Pastor Marco Quintana in DeVore, in the Inland Empire, on the uh, eastern outskirts or the eastern suburbs of Los Angeles. 
And from there, we move on to Maui and Hawaii with Pastor Rob Finberg. Again, these details are on the Moriel website, moriel.org, <clears throat> or just Google Moriel Itinerary. Well, quite a week this has been, and quite a lot of things going on. So much is going on that people are what Jesus warned about. Sheep are easily excitable creatures, and they tend to become very nervous, and they tend to wander, and they can find themselves in trouble, sometimes surrounded by wolves, particularly lambs who wander off, young believers who will wander off and become prey for wolves. However, he said his sheep hear his voice. I don't want people to hear my voice. I want people to hear the voice of Jesus by his spirit through his word. Confusing and tumultuous as world events are and as they are progressively becoming, Jesus forewarned us of these things and told us what to do about it. We need to understand the world in which we live, not just what is happening, but why it is happening. There's nothing happening here outside of the scope of what the Lord told us would happen prior to his return. Jesus told us. Now, we acknowledge that there have been many times in history when true believers thought it was the close of the age and Christ was coming soon. The question becomes automatically, what makes this time different than the other times? We are planning to do a film project in this regard at Moriel, but in a nutshell, what makes this time different? Than the other times in history when Christians thought it was the close of the age and the Lord was coming soon is this. The Jews are regathered to Israel and to their ancient capital. Jesus made this clear in Luke 21, 24. Jerusalem will be trampled down by the feet of the Gentiles till the time of the Gentiles is completed. The contention around the Temple Mount still trampled under the feet of the Gentiles by the Al-Aqsa Mosque and by the Dome of the Rock, that is the Mosque of Omar, as it is sometimes called, this is the most disputed piece of territory on the face of the earth. As we always point out, Jerusalem is where Satan got his biggest defeat, and it's where he will get his final defeat when the Lord comes back and his feet stand on the Mount of Olives. There is a spiritual battle over Israel and over Jerusalem in particularly. It is not coincidental that the most radical Islamic militants who hate and want to destroy Israel are calling themselves the Al-Aqsa Brigade. The Al-Aqsa Brigade. The Al-Aqsa Mosque stands on the Temple Mount, overlooking the original city of David, mounted on top of something called a milieu that was filled in by King Solomon, looking down at the original city of David is the Al-Aqsa Mosque standing between where the temple was and the original city of David. Now, there's a reason for this. This is an important site in the beliefs of the Muslims, but it is a barrier between the temp where the temple was and the original city of David. We should make no mistake about it based on Zechariah 12, based on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, based on Revelation chapter 11, based on Matthew 23, verses 39 and 40. The Jews are back in Jerusalem by the prophetic design of God, and this is the epicenter of the conflict. Al-Aqsa, Al-Aqsa. I've been inside of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and I've been to it many times. It stands roughly where Solomon's portico stood on the southern axis of the temple. Um, just south of the temple, but on the Temple Mount, again, overlooking the Milu in the city of David, is where the Al-Aqsa Mosque is, but that is where Solomon's portico stood. Solomon's portico is where Jesus debated the Pharisees, debated other rabbis, and it's where he taught his disciples. It is also the area when the apostles met house to house and in the temple where the early church met where the early church met. Now there is a mosque situated there. And of course, on the Temple Mount is the Mosque of Omar, the Dome of the Rock, 
with an inscription from the Quran that says, Allah is not begotten, neither does he beget. God has no son. It says that. Right where the temple stood and where Jesus will be worshipped during the millennium in the millennial temple, according to the book of Zechariah, Ezekiel, and so forth, it's there. This is not just about real estate. It's about prophecy. Now, of course, we need to be concerned of the other temple, the church, and the false teachers and false prophets in the church and the decline of Christianity, particularly in the post-Judeo-Christian world. That is absolutely true. But we should not negate the prophetic significance of what is happening in the Middle East today concerning Israel and the Jews. Also, Romans 11 tells us, and Revelation chapter 7 and 14 tell us something else, that the time of the Gentiles will draw to a close and God will turn his prophetic purposes and his salvific purposes for salvation back to Israel and the Jews. We've seen this incredible increase in the numbers of Jews coming to faith in Jesus in the last 50 years, particularly in the last 30 years, and their numbers are increasing. I'm in New York City, the biggest Jewish population center in the world, in history. Uh, it has more Jews than, than Tel Aviv, more Jews than Jerusalem, and that's where I am. Well, you see more and more Jewish believers all the time in New York. You see more and more Jewish believers all the time in Israel. I recall back in the 1970s when I first was in Israel in the 1970s, I didn't speak much Hebrew then, but I, I had contact with local believers who friends in, in America told me about, and I connected with them, and that's where I met my wife and so forth. I led her to the Lord in Jerusalem, and I was there, and there was only about 200 known Jewish believers in the entire nation of Israel at that time, 200 born-again saved Jews. Everybody knew everybody. There was only a handful of congregations, small, nothing to it. Now there are thousands. Now, I don't say it is a sizable percentage of the overall Jewish population, but compared to what it's always been for centuries, not since the early church have we seen so many Jews coming to faith in Jesus. I was out with family last night in the theater district here in New York. I have family. I have a sister who's a believer. I have uh, other family who are not believers, who I'm always trying to influence with the gospel, of course. And we were out. I was out with family. I go out with family when I'm, when I'm in New York. This is where I'm from. And... Uh, I was seated next to two Jewish women. And right away, the door opened for me to begin sharing my faith with them. They're from New York, but they live in Connecticut in the suburbs. And this happens all the time. All the, I was able to give them a track, and they were interested. And this happens all the time. God is opening the door of the gospel to more and more Jewish people, just as Romans 11 said would happen the natural branches are being grafted in again. These things have not happened since the early centuries of Christianity. Israel is like God's timepiece. Israel is what makes this time different than the other times. Now let's consider what's happening last night. It was announced, New York time. It would have been in the middle of the night, UK time. It would have been the following morning, um, Australia time and New Zealand time, that Israel did a limited retaliatory series of airstrikes on Iran. And we know that working through the Hutus, Houthis, sorry, Hutus are in Africa, the Houthis in Yemen, working through Hezbollah in Lebanon, working through um, Hamas in Gaza, using surrogates, Iran is trying to destroy Israel. Well, Daniel chapter 10 tells us this. Verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia was withstanding Daniel. And there was a spiritual battle between Michael the archangel, one of the chief princes, came to me and I was left there with the king of Persia. 
Persia is, of course, Iran. Iran. Now, Iran comes from the Aryan. Iranians are not Arabs. They're Muslims, but they're not Arabs. They are the anthropological cousins of the Germanic peoples. They're anthropological cousins in their mitochondrial DNA. They would not be related to Arabs. They would be related to Germans and Austrians if we went back far enough. They are Aryans, Iran, but in the ancient world, they were Persians. And there's a principality over Persia. When the Shah of Iran fell, he was not the nicest guy in the world, but it was better than it is now. He fell due to the weakness of the American government under Carter at the time, in part. Radical Muslims ascended into power with Ayatollah Khomeini, determined to destroy Israel and the Jews, the prince of Persia. There was a demonic power on back of the Iranian government. Daniel speaks about this, that Iran would become an existential threat to the existence of Israel. Now, I'm not saying that this is the final showdown predicted by Daniel, but I am saying the conflict that we're witnessing is very much the fulfillment, or at least the part partially fulfilling and increasingly fulfilling Daniel chapter 10. These conflicts are not coincidental. What you see happening with Jews coming to faith, what you see happening with Jews coming back to Israel and to their capital, Jerusalem, since 1967, what you see happening with Jews coming to faith in Jesus. And it was that same year, 1967, when the Jesus movement began in the United States and approximately, by best estimates, 30,000 Jewish hippies and, and university students turned to Christ in 1967 in the Jesus movement, the revival among the hippies. That include there were many, many people saved, but 30,000 of them were young Jewish people. The Jews for Jesus movement came out of that, that move of God. At that time, there was a revival among hippies. Uh, that's when I got saved. And uh, many, many things happened. One of them was that you saw an automatic increase overnight in the number of young Jewish believers in Yeshua in Jesus as the Messiah, and it happened very quickly. And it happened concurrent with the Six-Day War. This was the hand of God prophetically. Now, I speak of this for a reason. I've been warning much about the boy who cried wolf syndrome. We see crackpots, silly people, highlighting all kinds of things, some of them profiteering on it by putting out books and recordings, people saying outrageous things, not to be crude or to be um, <laughs> reviling, but stupid things, things that are absolutely stupid. We saw one the week before last. I was in England then, and it was the eclipse of, of the 8th of April. Well, what happened? As we predicted, nothing. There is nothing unusual about an eclipse. They're predictable. That is not the kind of signs the Bible talks about to observe in the cosmos. Not naturally occurring astro astronomical or cosmological phenomena. Those are not the kind of signs. Yet people were saying this, and oh, the red heifers. Well, yeah, they, there are red heifers, and there are people who want to rebuild the temple for sure. But you get people into the conspiracy theories, and you get crackpots, in, in, and I have to call them this. The Bible warns about them. Jesus said you won't know the day or the hour. You get these bizarre people, J.D. Farrag, and it's absolute nonsense, setting dates. Robert Breaker, the prophecy of, of, of Revelation 12 was fulfilled on the... Um, 23rd of September in the year 2017, because in the zodiac, the zodiac, the, what, what astrologers follow, in the zodiac, in the horoscope, the moon was in Virgo. And there were Christians, many Christians, tens of thousands of them, buying into this kind of ridiculous garbage. We had Mark Biltz and his blood moons. On top of that, according to the NASA website, his dates were wrong. There's nothing unusual about naturally occurring celestial, celestial phenomena. 
Now, we have addressed this in the past. I'm only touching on it again relative to our subject now. When people get diverted into listening to nonsense and crackpots and false teachers, um, wild people saying crazy things, racial Baxter, and these, 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 people who just... The, I don't. I, I. I would seriously question the sanity of some of them. Not that I'm clinically qualified to do so, but it's so absurd. And then, of course, there's the cognitive dissonance that follows it when the predictions fail to happen. Then they move on like the Jehovah's Witnesses to make another prediction. These people do a lot of damage. One of the reasons Satan has raised these people up is to be the boy who cried wolf. So that when something of authentic prophetic significance happens, people will just think it's these crazy Christians making wild, fanciful predictions again. No, we're to look for the signs the Bible tells us. And contemporary events in the Middle East do distinguish the present time in history from the other times in history, saved Christians thought it was the close of the age. We plan on, Lord willing, making a documentary filmed on location concerning this in the not-too-distant future. May the Lord provide the, the resources, both human and financial, to do it. Nonetheless, let's understand what happened. What happened last night? What happened in the middle of the night? What happened today in Iran? This relates to Daniel chapter 10. The Temple Institute trying to resurrect the Levitical priesthood and breed what they consider to be halakhically acceptable red heifers. This points to the construction of a tribulational temple in Revelation 11. Now again, an abomination of desolation will be set up in the church. The church is the temple, we're told multiple times in the New Testament but it will be exemplified by what is happening in Israel. Satan is out to get true believers. He's out to get the true church, and he's out to get Israel and the Jews. Unfortunately, you have Christians, even people professing to be saved Christians, who are doing his bidding, who are working for him. You've got people like Rick Warren who says, avoid end time prophecy, it's a diversion. That man speaks from the devil. Jesus said, be watchful, be alert, watch for these things. Rick Warren, speaking for Satan, gives a diametric opposite exhortation. You've got crackpots, people like J.D. Farrag, Robert Breaker. These are false teachers and, and just crackpots. You've got people among Christians. Satan has a fifth column within the church. People who teach dominionism, kingdom now theology, re the reconstructionists who deny the future meaning of the book of Revelation or the Olivet Discourse. The, the, these people are being manipulated by the devil to mislead Christians. Some deny the rapture. Well, Satan also has people within the Jewish community. I'm here in New York, and you have them in other places, some in England and Stamford Hill, and there's some in Israel and B'nai Brak and Meir Sharim called Setma Hasidim. Setma Hasidim. They hate Israel. They are anti Zionist. They're in a political party called Agudat Israel. They hate Israel. They were marching with radical Muslims against Zionism this week in New York. They were marching with left-wing liberation theology unsaved, quote-unquote, Christians, small c, with radical Muslims and with Satmar Hasidim against Zionism. You have left-wing Jews, people like Bernie Sanders, people like Chuck Schumer, people you know like Debbie Wasserman Schultz. They are no friends of Israel. There is a political party with the squad that is anti-Semitic and that hates Israel and that hates Jews. They're in a party with these same people. 
when the American embassy was moved by Donald Trump from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. One retired senator, Senator Joseph Lieberman, who died a few weeks ago, attended. Lumenthal wasn't there. Governor Spritzer of Illinois wasn't there. Debbie Wasserman Schultz wasn't there. Steve Cohen, the congressman, the homosexual congressman, I believe, was not there. Chuck Schumer was not there. Adam Schiff was not there. Jerry Nadler was not there. Where were these left-wing Jews when the American embassy was moved to Jerusalem? They hate Trump. And he's the one who blessed Israel. Now, I'm not campaigning on behalf of Donald Trump. I'm not making a political statement. I'm only speaking certain facts. Satan has people in the church who are working for him. And he has people within the Jewish community who are working for him. This is the way things are. We need to understand it. Well, what else? What else has been transpiring, and how do we need to understand it? This past week, in Brussels, there was a conference of European conservatives. Among the speakers were prime ministers from Eastern European countries who are aware of the Islamic threat and they do not want to see happening in Hungary or in other countries in Eastern Europe what has happened in France, in Holland, and in Britain due to Islamic immigration. They do not want that radicalism within their borders. They do not want to see happen to their country what George Bush opened the door to happen in America and Obama opened the door to happen in America. They want to restrict Islamic immigration to filter out radical Muslims. Among the other speakers were Suella Braverman, a young British Asian conservative woman, uh, and Nigel Farage, Farage, the champion of Brexit. Well, local socialist mayors in Brussels have the police close down the meetings and not let the meetings, the conferences take place. They moved venues three times from one place to another, and in each place, without any legal right to do so, other than what they ascribe to themselves, were trying to prevent riots and protests. So we're going to close it down. Notice they don't close down Islamic rallies or left-wing socialist rallies or conferences. They only close down conservative ones. In the United States, we see this with social media. If they don't agree with your opinion, they will close you down. And we know that the corrupt Justice Department and the FBI, who are not legitimate in any ethical sense, are collaborating with social media in Silicon Valley to shut down dissenting opinion that goes against the narrative, the party line. The people who are funded by George Soros and the radicals, they don't get shut down much. But those who oppose them, they're silenced. They're silenced. The mainstream media does not fairly report the news and editorializes it along the lines of its own biases. There's no mainstream media, hardly. People have to go to alternative platforms like Newsmax or something or, or One America to find independent news in the United States. You cannot believe the networks. You can't believe certainly CNN or MSNBC of all lies. The wire services, the New York Times, I'm just a couple of, around the corner from me where I am now, almost. I'm three blocks from the New York Times or the, the Washington Compost, as I call it. It's all lies. They editorialize the news. They do not report it. It's the same largely in Britain. The BBC, newspapers like The Guardian, I don't trust them. People should not trust them. Well, we see what happens. You have a prosecutor, a district attorney, a prosecutor in New York, 
there was a 72 year old immigrant from the Dominican Republic, a Hispanic who came to New York and he worked in a bodega. A bodega is a grocery shop in a Spanish speaking neighborhood in New York. And he worked in a bodega and some guy who happened to be black came in and tried to rob the place at gunpoint. This brave man in his 70s attacked and fought the robber and shot and killed him with his own gun. Bragg, that's his name, racially motivated, left-wing black person, filed murder charges against this 70-something-year-old Hispanic man for protecting his life. Under political pressure, the charges were dropped. The Hispanic man went back to the Dominican Republic. This guy, Bragg, he lets murderers, even murderers, out of prison, and they, with the recidivism rate, they create, they perpetrate further felonies because he won't prosecute them or he won't hold them in bail. He's pro-crime. He's basically pro-crime. You see that throughout the United States. You see that in Chicago with Kim Fox. You see it in San Francisco. You see it with Krasner in Philadelphia. You've got pro-crime prosecutors. In effect, their policies are pro-crime. They tie the hands of the police. They will allow open shoplifting, even shoplifting up to up to a thousand dollars in san francisco they won't even prosecute you unless you've stolen more than nine hundred dollars worth of merchandise from a shop how can people run businesses well they can't this is creating food deserts supermarkets are closing all sorts of things this is across the united states it's an intentional policy to destroy local commerce, and to empower criminals, allowing illegal aliens to come in and commit all kinds of crimes, bring in fentanyl, engage in human trafficking, and then cut social services. Denver just defunded part of its police and fire department to give money to illegal aliens with no legal right to be in the country. This is happening all over the United States. At the same time, they bring bogus prosecutions against their political enemies, particularly Donald Trump's people. Bogus prosecutions with no real evidence. Donald Trump put up as security his estate in Mar-a-Lago in Florida to Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank made loans to him for project development. He paid the loans back with interest. Everybody was happy. Yet he's falsely accused by a politically driven state attorney general who said she ran for office to fight Trump. She admitted that. She should be removed from office. She should not be eligible for office. And saying that he overstated the value of Mar-a-Lago. And this is what they're going to prosecute. There was no crime. But it's politics some other scandal where they say he paid hush money in something involving some whore, uh, which he denies. Hush money to a whore's lawyer? Well, they're letting murderers walk the streets. This is unbelievable corruption. But why is this happening? Why is this happening in Europe? In January 6th, the protests, they tried to say it was an insurrection and a policeman was beaten to death by the pro-Trump protesters. Later, they admitted he died of a stroke. No policeman was beaten to death. Two people were killed by the Capitol Police, both unarmed, including a U.S. female Air Force veteran. They were infiltrated by the corrupt FBI, certainly. And you've got people held in prison without bail by left-wing judges appointed by Obama. It is the end of democracy. There is no independent judiciary. It is a political institution. Politically appointed prosecutors, politically appointed judges, it is all corrupt. Why is this happening? In Europe, in Britain, in America, 
Well, we pointed out before righteousness exalts a nation. Because the UK and the USA and the other English-speaking democracies have turned their back on the God-given biblical values that bequeath these nations their democratic freedom, the democratic freedom is now disappearing. You take God who gave it out of the equation and the system implodes, the democracy disappears. We've said this multiple times. But there's another reason that this is happening, a much more sinister reason. Look with me, please, if you will, to Matthew chapter 24. The Olivet Discourse, Matthew's version, I'm reading in verse 9. They will deliver you to Philipsis, to tribulation. Now, do not believe the pre-tribulation people. They are wrong. They are misguided. There is a megathalipson and a tribulation. Jesus made it clear that the rapture and resurrection happen after the tribulation of those days in verses um, 29 and 30 and 31 of Matthew 24, not before. This is not at the end of the seven years. It's before the wrath of God. The tribulation is not the entire seven years. It is one phase of it. The rapture and resurrection, the parousia, separate the great tribulation from the wrath of God. The faithful believers are not appointed unto wrath. But Jesus said there will be tribulation. There will be tribulation. You'll be delivered to all nations and they will kill you and they will hate you. Now, when we look at this synoptically in Luke's parallel, one of Luke's parallelisms to it, in Luke chapter 12, verses 11 and 12, the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 12, verses 11 and 12, please, what do we see? They will bring you before the synagogues. Notice there will be religious persecution. There will be religious persecution. Certainly. We see this happening in Judaism. The hatred of Jewish believers by the rabbinic establishment. That's always happened. But now we see it in other denominations. The Roman Catholic Church is not biblically Christian. It is a papacy has always been institutionally corrupt. Popes, by definition, are antichrists. Nonetheless, you've got bishops, Roman Catholic clergy, trying to stand up for traditional values concerning homosexuality who are being persecuted within the Catholic Church by the Vatican and by the Pope, who is accommodating same-sex relationships. You see this with the Methodists. You see this with the World Council of Churches. You see it with the Anglicans. The conservatives, the Bible-believing members, or at least those who hold to a biblical standard of morality, and particularly those who are born again, are being increasingly squeezed and choked within these corrupt denominations. That includes evangelicism. Okay. What does it say? And rulers and authorities do not become anxious about how you should speak in your defense or what you will say. The Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say, Jesus tells us. But let's go further with this. Let's look at Matthew chapter 10, verses 18 to 22. You shall be brought before governors and kings for my name's sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. And they'll deliver you up and so forth and so forth. We are told this. Now notice it also says in Luke, magistrates, courts, the political use of the judiciary, magistrates and kings. 
There will be an alliance between government and the judiciary that is not independent. The judiciary will simply become a political organ. That is what is happening in the United States in the Trump trials this week. But what am I saying? What I'm saying is this. The world is in the power of the wicked one. Jesus made this very, very clear, extremely clear. These laws are being used politically now against people who challenge the corrupt establishment. The media stacks the deck against them. The courts are political organs of political persecution. The FBI, the Federal Bureau of Intimidation, the Injustice, U.S. Department of Injustice, these are corrupt. These are Nazi esque Gestapo type organizations. They have no ethical credibility. They are operating unconstitutionally, even anti constitutionally, in the opinion of many people. And it's God's judgment that the democracy is disappearing. However, what is the real purpose of these laws? What is the real purpose of this kind of corruption? and seduction of the judiciary and turning it into an instrument of po uh, political aggression and, and uh, making the courts a political weapon. Look with me, please, to the book of Daniel, chapter 6. Understand what is really happening. Daniel, chapter 6, verse 5. These men said, we shall not find any ground of accusation against this Daniel unless we find it against him with regard to the law of his God. These demonically animated corruptocrats who run the American, British governments, European governments, world governments, demonically animated corruptocrats, now, we're told to pray for these people because if they're not influenced by our prayers, they're going to be influenced by the demonic even more acutely. Get the laws on the books. Ultimately, it's not about using the laws against January 6th protesters or European conservatives or Donald Trump. It's about using those laws against Bible-believing Christians and ultimately against Jews and Zionists. Let's understand they just want the laws on the books. They seem to be innocuous. Oh, you're against same-sex marriage? Tolerance has been redefined as you must give approval. If you oppose your children, being taught homosexuality and lesbianism are normal and that their sexual identity is not determined by chromosomes but by their own choice against the logic of science. The corrupt American government, the Department of Injustice, the Justice Department as they call themselves, the corrupt FBI, the American Gestapo as it has become, Putting the names of Christian parents on terrorist watch lists. You've got heathen, radical Muslim savages running amok protesting, rioting, closing down the Golden Gate Bridge. They're not on terrorist watch lists. Christians are. What is on back of these laws and those who are pushing them? It's going to be aimed at Christians. Yeah, it's being used politically now. But they will try to outlaw the teachings of our faith. You challenge Darwinism. You challenge same-sex marriage. You challenge non-therapeutic abortion. They want to make these things hate crimes. 
They're already convicting you without trial, closing you down on the internet if you don't agree with them or if you disagree with them. Now, they know what they're doing, but unless you have money, a lot of money, they will try to intimidate you. I can't afford to hire these lawyers and fight these cases. Now, the corrupt government is so evil, and these prosecutors are so demonically controlled, they're going to hell, most of them. They're going to hell. Very few of them will repent. Most of them are going to hell. Th that is the justice. You want justice? The justice will be eternal hell for most of these people. That's the only justice is going to be. Few of them will repent. Ooh. They will intimidate. You can't afford to fight this. You can't afford to hire these high-powered, costly lawyers to fight for your oh boy they'll intimidate to try to silence you the little guy doesn't have a chance the big guys like trump are having to fight tooth and nail where does the little guy stand where does the ordinary christian who does not want his children indoctrinated in a school to believe things that are not simply unscriptural but unscientific they'll be intimidated hate crime they will call it i don't hate homosexuals i hate homosexuality they won't make that difference they just want the laws on the books and then of course you're going to see what you see after september 11th attacks and after the london tube attacks Islamic immigration should have been stopped. In fact, it should have been stopped earlier than that. People like Steve Emerson were trying to warn the American government and they were ignored by the Bush administration because the Saudi Arabians had the Bush dynasty in their back pocket. True fact, not just opinion. That is why you see Cheney's daughter and these people hate Trump. Willing to sell the country down the river. In effect, that's what they did. They continued to give express visas to Saudi Arabians despite most of the September 11th bombers being Saudi Arabian. You allow these people to come in and riot. Make immigration. Apply for U.S. citizenship on false pretense, saying that they accept the Constitution when they are lying. Their religion, Tahweed, has a doctrine. Tahweed, they're allowed to lie to the infidel to advance the jihad. What these people are are jihadists who want to make Sharia the replacement for constitutional democracy. That's their goal. They openly say, I've seen them openly say this on television in Canada on the news. And Trudeau goes with them. In America, they go with them, particularly Obama and Biden. Began with Bush. It goes on in Britain. A mayor of London, Muslim, has made outrageous statements. The first minister of Scotland, another Muslim, outrageous statements. Outrageous. But they get away with it. No, it is only not just conservatives. Christians who are threatened by law, who are arrested, who are sequestered. Heathen barbarian savages, and I'm not saying all Muslims are heathen barbarian savages. There are moderate Muslims who are not that way, but a high percentage of Muslims are that way. Watch the news. The Rushdie riots trying to kill a British citizen for writing a book, The Bradford Riots. From the river to the sea, Palestine must be free. The Jews are the indigenous people of that land. I would say, from the river, the Jordan, from the river to the sea, Israel must be free. They should have annexed the West Bank in 1967. They're the indigenous people says the word of God, says history, and says archaeology. That land is historically and
and legally something bequeathed by God to the Jews. It's their land, they're the indigenous people. Now, even if I didn't believe it was bequeathed by God, on the basis of history, verified by archaeology, and on the basis of international law, Ude Presidius Juris, it would be their land. There's no occupation, and indigenous people can't occupy their own land. Seminoles cannot occupy Florida. Jews cannot occupy Jericho or Jerusalem or Hebron. But let's look. What's happening? Look with me, please, to Revelation chapter 6, verses 13 to 16. So our Revelation, yeah, chapter 16, verses 13 to 16. Revelation 16, please. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. This is the false prophet of the Antichrist. Three unclean spirits like frogs for they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them together for the war of the great day of god the almighty behold i'm coming like a thief blessed is the one who stays awake and keeps his garments lest he walk about naked and men see his shame now that's what god says and that is a warning to Christians. Read it again. I'm coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake. Rick Warren, Satan's liar, Rick Warren, he works for the devil, says, no, avoid end time prophecy. It's a diversion. Rick Warren speaks from the pit of hell. The devil speaks through his mouth. His tongue is controlled by a demon. He's a man of satanic agency God says be awake be awake let's look and keeps his garments the garments of salvation another agent of the devil is Andy Wood he says the dead in Christ are backsliders. They're going to be raptured first. No, the dead in Christ are the people who've given up the ghost and gone to be with the Lord, whose bodies are going to be resurrected and reunited with their souls and spirits when Christ returns. Those are the dead in Christ. It is not backslidden Christians. He says, no, the dead in Christ are backslidden Christians, and they're going to be resurrected. They're going to be raptured first. This is Andy Wood. That man has a lying spirit from the devil. He is from the devil. And those who give him platform, like Tom Hughes, are giving the handing the devil a microphone. Lest he walk about naked, not having the garments of salvation. And they gather them together to the place which in Hebrew is called Har Megiddo, Mount Megiddo, the Valley of Jezreel. From the river to the sea, Palestine must be free. ultimately the forces of Antichrist will try to drive the Jews out of that land. You already see the corrupt court in The Hague. Are they indicting the mullahs of Iran? No, they're trying to indict the elected government of Israel for defending themselves against radical Islam. All the nations. This is not just Satan trying to destroy the Jews. It's his final war against God. Look with me, please, to Zechariah chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. 
Verse 3. It'll come about on that day, I'll make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the people. All who lift it will be critically injured. That includes the governments of America and Britain if they try to divide Jerusalem. And all the nations of the earth will be gathered against it. UN resolution after resolution. Against China for Tiananmen Square or because of the Uyghurs? No. 700,000. 700,000 Arab Muslims killed in Syria. That is how many. UN resolutions? No. 400,000 people in Yemen killed by the Saudi Arabians, Arab Muslims, 400,000. Any UN resolutions? No. Israel for defending itself from radical Muslims? More than 50% of the resolutions. There's a demonic power on back of the United Nothing. I used to live here in New York, right across the street from it. I could tell you about what it was like. You would see these diplomats, and you could tell by the flags on their car, on their limousines, and the seals, the diplomatic seals, and there were parking areas around the UN where only they could park, right downstairs from where I lived. I could look out the window and see the UN. You had people from the most impoverished countries in the world. Infant mortality, reduced longevity, endemic unemployment, environmental catastrophe, food shortage, hunters, unstable governments, even genocide. And these guys are in limousines. Lincoln Continentals, Rolls Royce, Mercedes Benz limos, big Cadillacs, Bentleys. You can tell by the flags and the seals. Here in Manhattan, living salubrious lifestyles, living Park Avenue, Fifth Avenue lifestyles in New York like kings, while the people in their own country go hungry. And then they go into the UN and denounce Western imperialism and denounce Israel. The hypocrisy of the United Nothing is unbelievable. You've got countries on the UN Disarmament Committee who are funding terror like Iran. You've got countries on the UN Human Rights Commission with the worst human rights records in the world. It is all hypocrisy. But they condemn Israel. Well, what does God say? God says this, verse 9 of Zechariah 12. God is not happy. It'll come about on that day, I will destroy, I will set about to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. These savage barbarians, Radical Islam takes a human being made in the image and likeness of God and reduces them to the animalistic level of an animal with rabies. Now, I'm not saying moderate Muslims are like that, and there are Ahmadi Muslims who are generally peaceful people. I have nothing against them. Not at all. I don't object to them immigrating to Western countries. But the radicals, the fundamentals... They have the minds of animals with rabies. Coming to the Western world to spread jihad and to undermine democracy with Sharia? And say so! And politicians like Trudeau give them the keys to do it. And Obama and Biden and Bush. This is God's judgment. 
Well, that is what is happening. But the Lord will make war on behalf of Israel. And he will deal with their unbelief. They will look upon him who they have pierced and mourn as one mourns for an only son in Zechariah 12.10. But that is what is happening and that is why it is happening. All of these things. Once more, please look with me to Matthew 24, the Olivet Discourse. Matthew's version of it. Verses 14 and 15. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world for a witness to all the nations. Then the end shall come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolations, which was spoken through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. When you have an antichrist like Stephen Furtick standing up in a church saying, I am God Almighty, I am God Almighty. He's putting himself in the place of God. No, the only man who was God is Jesus Christ. Furtick is an antichrist. The abomination is being set up in the temple already, the church. But there will be a tribulational temple. They will make a covenant with death with the Antichrist. That is coming. But before that comes, we are told the gospel of the kingdom is to be preached. As much as I despise Islam, I do not despise Muslims. I would rather them get saved than be destroyed and sent to hell. I despise the Vatican and the papacy, but I do not despise Catholic people. My mother's family are Catholic. Some of them have become Christians. I would much rather my mother's family become believers in Jesus and get saved and leave Rome than go to hell believing in a false gospel that says you have to atone for your own sin in purgatory when the blood of Christ cleanses from all sin. I despise homosexuality, but not homosexuals and lesbians. I despise homosexuality because it's killing them and will destroy their souls. I have friends who are homosexuals and lesbians, and I have brothers and sisters in Christ who were saved out of it. I'd much rather see them get saved than perish. But if you hate homosexuality... It's a hate crime. It means you hate homosexuals. If you hate radical Islam, it's a hate crime. It means you hate Arabs or Persians or Asians. If you hate abortion, it means you hate women. That's what they're saying. No. It's not like that. The gospel of the kingdom must be preached. Yes, an abomination of desolation is being set up in the church. And it will be set up in Jerusalem. We only have a certain amount of time to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom is at hand. Jesus is coming soon. That is our message. Let us be faithful unto him and proclaim it while there is still time. In all probability, there is not a lot of time left. And these things you see happening in the political realm and in the judicial realm with January 6th and Donald Trump and the EU. And remember, those laws are being used politically now for political persecution. It is only a matter of time before they are used for the persecution of saved believers in Jesus. Only a matter of time. That is what is happening, and that is why. Thank you so much for listening. My name is James Jacob Prash from Warrior Ministries. 
God bless. Have a good weekend and tell somebody about Jesus. and supporters. We at RTNTV are reaching out to our valued community with a heartfelt request. As a network dedicated to bringing quality content to your screens, we continually strive to improve and expand our offerings. However, this journey is not one we can embark on alone. Your support plays a crucial role in helping us achieve our goals. Whether it's funding new projects, upgrading equipment, or simply keeping our operations running smoothly, every donation, no matter the size, makes a significant difference. By donating to RT and TV, you become an integral part of our mission to educate, inform, and inspire. Together, we can continue to make a positive impact through the power of media. 
please consider making a contribution today. Your generosity will help ensure that our TNTV remains a vibrant and dynamic force in our community. Thank you for your continued support and for being a part of the RTNTV family. Warm regards, the RTNTV Board.